Hello, what is up guys? Eman from Peso Smart PH here. Welcome sa open bagong episode. Shout out to all the podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. So today, review lang tayo ng mga articles galing sa business world and then later, sisilipin natin yung aking portfolio as well as mga financials ng ilang companies na nag-release na ng kanilang annual report for 2020. So let's start with this one. So galing sa business world, as I've said earlier, si GMA Network will buy Moderna vaccines for employees and talents. So okay, uh, bigay ko muna yung thoughts ko sa inyo dito. No? So first, um, magandang publicity to para sa GMA 7. Kasi nga, uh, hindi naman lahat like ng companies na kaya mag-provide ng vaccine, ng, ng free vaccine no? for like their employees. So that's the first one and then second one this is really good because it really shows that this company cares for its employees and they understand no na kapag wala naman yung employees nila pag wala yung talents nila then hindi sila mag-exist di ba they they will cease to exist kapag ka nawala yung mga employees nila and yung mga talents nila so they really understand that And naalala ko nga din yung sinabi ni Ramon ang uh, nung nag-start yung pandemic no <clears throat> kung bakit ba hindi like fina fire or tinatanggal tinatanggal ng trabaho yung kanilang employees kasi sinabi niya at this point life is more important than money kasi yung life kapag gano wala yun no pag namatay na yung tao or yung employee mo like hindi mo na hindi mo na kayang ibalik yun eh Uh, but money, you can always earn more in the future. So yeah, tamang mentality yun. Uh, I I think other businesses will follow uh, the lead of Ramon Ang and of course, ito si GME7. So yeah, that is really good leadership. Alright, so yan. Uh, yung Moderna, by the way, is a US company. So pharma company siya uh, na nag-originate sa US. Alright. And then, yun lang naman siya basically, no? And then, nag-comment lang si Felipe Gozon, yung kanilang CEO and chairman. So, yeah, ensuring the health and well-being of our employees is our utmost priority as we truly value our people as our best assets. That is correct. Kasi nga, kapag wala naman yung mga taong yun, walang employees, yung talents, yung artists nila, then wala, walang, walang mangyayari sa GME7, di ba? As a result, this vaccination coverage will enable us to continue our public service as we all strive to win against this pandemic. So yeah, that is really good to hear. And yeah, I think this will positively affect then uh, yung kanilang stocks. Uh, I, I don't really care if it goes up or down. Kasi sa tingin ko, uh, malaki yung parang price bracket uh, na na sobrang worth it no <laughs> nitong stock ng GME7 like n- nakabili ako before at around 5 pesos per share and i really think na kahit pumalo siya ng 10 12 13 up until 15 pesos per share no i think it's still worth buying kasi nga ayun kita niyo naman leadership is really good business is good financials is good yeah i think wala nang ibang hanapin pa and yun medyo na monopolize na rin nila yung industry nila Alright, next one is another one from Business World. So, si Cebu Air reports net losses of over 22 billion pesos for 2020. Okay, that really hurts. No? So, first reason nga is ang daming cancelled flights last year and then nagkaroon pa ng travel ban. So, yeah, wala rin talagang uh, demand. No? Like, yes, meron nakapag-travel here and there, pero iilan lang. You know? Yung total revenue nila for 2020 dropped 73% compared to 2019. So, grabe talaga yung impact nung pandemic sa kanila. And then, yung kanilang number of flights, 71% lower nung 2020 compared nung 2019. That is a really big hit sa kanilang business. So, that is why si Warren Buffett binenta din niya, no? yung kanyang mga airline stocks. Ako medyo na late nga ako magbenta. I should have sold mine nung medyo nag-pick at 50 plus pesos per share. But I just recently sold my Cebu stocks. Kasi yun, syempre. Ano, stubborn din ako. And <laughs> I was just waiting. Like, I was gonna sit on it for a while. And then, sab- 
sinasabi ko lang sa sarili ko na hindi, tataas din naman ulit yan eh. But yeah, it's like a slow process. Kung nag-sick ako doon, matutulog lang yung, yung capital ko. No? Matutulog lang yung capital ko for a while. And that's around 30 plus K din. So I just took around, I think, 2k na losses overall but uh, I think it's worth it. Mababawi ko naman siya pagka nagbigay ng dividend si Jamie 7 kasi yung pinagbentahan ko nitong si Cebu Pacific is ininvest ko lang din sa Jamie 7 so I think it's worth it. But yeah, yun yung tema ni Cebu Air until now no wala pa rin namang masyadong demand for air travel so I I'm, I don't think maka recover sila this year but I think this year is gonna be a bit better compared to 2020 but yeah we'll see wala naman talaga makapag predict nun and hopefully uh, makabawi nga sila uh, sooner than later ngayon naman silipin natin si Phil Invest so si FLI net income down siya ng 41% noong 2020 comparing it to 2019 so grabe talaga ano Hindi lang yung airline company, pati itong real estate na apektohan din. So, 41% fall net income. Grabe. Grabe. Pero I think they're still making money. Like, okay lang yun, okay sa mag-incur ka ng losses. Okay lang maging down yung income. At least, like, yung nalilista mo pa din sa books mo is, yes, kumikita pa rin kami kahit na merong pandemic. So, that is, like, an upside in my opinion so diba kung i-compare mo sa Cebu Pacific like talaga sila lugi sila no so they're incurring losses billions of pesos but sa case naman FLI hindi sila nag-incur ng losses so bumaba lang talaga yung net income nila obviously lahat naman so yeah yun yung tema nila and uh, magkakaroon din naman sila like ng recovery plan for this year and then maglo-launch sila ng RIT no so sila na yung third RIT dito sa Philippines so abang-abang nang tayo dyan. I think I'm I'm gonna invest din dito sa particular RIT na to but yeah we'll see kasi baka magsabay-sabay like with Mondnesen and then yung sa National Grid Corporation of the Philippines so yeah we'll see and abang-abang lang tayo like ko na may cover yun sa mga future episodes natin. Alright. So, andito na tayo sa BPI trade. So, medyo nilinis ko na, no? <laughs> yung aking watch list. Kasi, na-realize ko na marami akong walang volume sa mga dividend paying stocks. And, ang dami kong kung ano-anong binibili na stocks before. Like, kung nakita nyo yung mga portfolio review ko previously, may kita nyo around 33, 32, 31 stocks yung hawa ko. But now, I just have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 stocks. And then yung iba dapat na benta ko na din. But awkward kasi yung kanilang, uh, yung kanilang board lot. So for example, si PLC, buwaba kasi yung stock prices niya. So dapat 10,000 na yung board lot. But yeah, kung tumasaman to ng konti, umabot ng I think... 50 centavos per share uh, I can like sell it na and yeah hold ko lang siya since konti na lang din naman yung holdings ko so yan so as you can see medyo imbalance na rin yung portfolio ko kasi kailangan ko rin ng volume with uh, Meralco pataas so kailangan kong bumili pa ng mas maraming Meralco mas maraming SPC power mas maraming Semirara Mas maraming PLDT and mas maraming Abortis Power. That is my goal for this year. So, dyan ko na lang ibubuhos lahat halos ng capital ko. And then, uh, buy Globe as well. I actually sold DMC kasi uh, medyo late sila nag-announce ng dividends. Uh, kumita naman ako sa DMC around, I think, 6,000 pesos. I'm, I'm not 100% sure but binenta ko siya last week, Monday. And then I bought some GMA 7 shares kasi nga, as you all know, 15% yung binibigay ni GMA 7 na uh, na dividend yield for this particular year which I think is gonna be sustainable naman in the coming years since wala silang halos kalaban no, sa media industry ng Philippines. And yeah, I think sustainable talaga yung financial situation nila. Alright, so yun. Yun lang naman no. Hindi naman natin kailangan like mag-dive deep. 
So ito, kita nyo, si AP, medyo bumaba ba yung stock prices niya kasi compared to last year, mas maliit yung binigay nilang uh, dividends for this year. But I think that's okay. Uh, ang dami kong nabasa na articles and like uh, yung plans nila uh, in the future, like going green and all that. So yeah, I think it's worth it to invest sa uh, Aboytis Power currently. And yan, maganda nga na medyo bumaba ba yung prices. Uh, si PLDT rin. So I bought it at around 1.3k. So nasa 1.2 na lang siya. Lugi ako ng 4k. So 11%. Then kay AP is 12%. That's okay. Uh, gusto ko ngayon, pag bumaba, mas bibili pa ako ng mas madami since medyo you know, naka-discount siya. And I think, well, prediction ko lang to, I think today, medyo bababa yung stock prices. Uh, kasi in-extend yung ECQ na naman. But I'm not sure kung ano yung maging sentiment ng mga investors and ng market. But I believe na bababa siya ng konti. But siguro sa ulit, tataas na lang din. Kasi magbabargain hunt na yung mga investors dyan. But yeah, anyway. Let us move on. Alright, so here we are sa PSE Edge. Hello there. So, nasa PLDT tayo. Tingnan lang natin no, yung mga net income ng ilang companies na nag-release na ng kanilang annual report. So, kung napanood nyo isa kong episode uh, na pakita ko na sa inyo kung ano yung kinalabasan no, ng, ng books ni PLDT. So, yeah. Net income niya after taxes. Nasa 24.5 billion pesos. So, Nag-grow yan almost 2 billion. So, 1.8 billion no? compared to 2019. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, isang main reason nga dyan is marami nagpa-connect like, ng internet sa kanilang bahay. Since ang dami nag-work from home last year. Yung mga may option na work from home which are uh, very fortunate. no Like, instead of losing their jobs, work from home na lang. So, yeah. Uh... That is pretty good for the business of PLDT. Then next one naman is si SunTrust Home Developers Incorporated. Fortunately, kita na natin dito agad. No? So yung net losses nila after taxes is 211.5 million pesos. So 2020 yun. And medyo lumit pa yung losses nila compared to 2019. So... Yeah, hindi sila kumikita, basically. That's pretty sad. Okay, so medyo lugi na sila the past two years. So, I wouldn't really look into buying this particular stock. And I don't think they give dividends. Yeah, wala silang dividends. So, okay. Let's move on. Next one naman is si All Home. Yung company ni Manny Villar. So, what do we have here? Net income after taxes is 987 million pesos. So, konti lang yung, ano, no, nabawas compared nung 2019. So, nasa 1.049 billion pesos yung kinihata nila on that particular year. And then, 987 million last year. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Earnings per share is 0.26 comparing it to 0.39 ng 2019. Yeah. That is, kung yung stock prices nila. Medyo tumaas na rin, no? Nag-recover na. Like, syempre dito, sobrang baba. Na nag-crash yung market. Then like, and gradually tumaas ng konti. Then, medyo downtrend. And tumaas na ulit ngayon. So, parang medyo sideways. Actually, parang downtrend nga ito. But yeah, sort of downtrend sideway, sideways-ish. And now, we have Lushutan Group or CLT Group. And kumita din sila, no? Five billion line difference compared to 2019. So, 22.3 billion nung 2020 yung kanilang net income after taxes. 27.5 billion nung 2019. So, hindi sila masyado na apektohan nung pandemic. But yeah, a 5 billion difference. Uh, yun pa rin nag cost nun. No? Yung COVID pa din. But not really that much compared nung sa ibang businesses. Next one naman is si Bloomberry Resorts Corporation. Ito ay company ni Enrique Razon. Actually, na ano siya, no? nasampan siya ng kaso sa US about like uh, the casino arbitration something. I just read it sa Business World. Link ko lang din sa baba if you're interested to, uh, to read up on that. But hindi naman sobrang na-apektan yung stocks nila. 
So around last week yun na, 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 na publish yung article. So yeah, hindi talaga naapektuhan. Anyway, we're here for their net losses. Okay, and sakit, no? Sakit. Pero mo, noong 2019, kumikita ka ng 9.9 .9 billion pesos after taxes. And then, nag-incur ka ng losses last year, 2020, because of the pandemic. 8.3 billion pesos. That is pretty big. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Medyo depressing to. Next one, we have Manulife. So this is in Canadian dollars. I think M is in millions. Is it? Okay. Let's go millions. This is like five. Okay. Okay, okay, let's follow this. Canadian dollars, millions. So the net income nila after taxes is around 5.5. Billion Canadian dollars. Lumaki pa ng konte no compared to 2019. Okay, convert nga natin yun. So I think hindi siya in Canadian in billions. I mean in millions no. So kasi pag convert may 5.5 Canadian uh, dollars, may 212 billion pesos. I think that's too big. But I'm not sure no. Kasi yun nakalagay. Uh, C, that's Canadian, then yung dollar sign, and then M. But yeah, I could be wrong. Next up, we have Crown Asia Chemicals Corporation. So, net income nila was 121.2 million pesos. So, konti lang din yung nabawas, no? 136.4 million pesos yung kinita nila noong 2019. So yeah, that is a Pretty good news para sa Crown Asia. There we go. Sa main stock prices nila, 1.86. Yeah, hindi naman sobrang naapektuhan yung kanilang stock prices. Alright, so we are on our last stock. So ito si Del Monte Pacific Limited. So yung figures dito is in US dollars. So this is in thousands. So magdadagdag lang tayo ng tatlong zeros. So unfortunately, meron silang net losses after taxes ng 900. Sorry, not 900. 93 million. Tama ba? Yes. 93 million US dollars yan. Grabe laki. Yung kinita nila nung 2019 is 14.2 million US dollars. Grabe. Medyo masakit-sakit yun, no? Malaki-laking pera din yung nawala sa kanila last year. Alright guys, we are heading towards the end of this episode. Lahat ng mga links dito sa mga articles na diniscuss natin earlier is matatagpuan sa description sa baba. And kung nagustuhan nyo tong video na to, don't forget to smash that like button kasi nakatulong yun sa algorithm ni YouTube para masuggest itong channel ko or itong video ko sa ibang like-minded people na gusto rin matuto mag-invest, no? And if bago ka sa channel, huwag mong kalimutan i-click yung subscribe button and ring the notification bell kasi nag upload ako ng new episodes every Monday and Friday and you don't wanna miss them. And sa mga hindi pa nakakaalam, active na yung channel memberships natin. Click mo lang yung second link sa description to know more. Thanks again for watching and listening everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all in the next episode. Always remember, be pesos smart.